So for the last uh, talk in this section on simple uh, machine learning methods, I'm going to talk about linear regression, logistic regression, and uh, support factor machines. Right? Now, I'm not going to talk too much about regression because this is something that you'll get in several other of your MBA courses. Uh, so I don't want to beat over a topic that you probably already know already. Uh, but let me mention a couple of things about it real quick. First of all, regression, the basic idea of regression where you take a series of data points and you fit a line to those data points in a linear regression fashion, right? That essentially is um, a machine learning technique. And I showed a little bit about that in the R Studio examples that I did in the very first uh, set of talks, right? About how you can fit linear models to data, right? Um, essentially, you're saying, I see these attributes of a customer, I wanna fit a line to it, and that was going to predict, for instance, um, their satisfaction with a particular product, right? Um, and so in some ways you can view regression as a method that is usable by machine learning. Logistic regression is very simpler, except similar, except for the fact that we're going to translate the binary classification problem into a regression problem. And we're going to do that by just saying that the dependent variable now can't scale arbitrarily, but can really only have two values, zero or one. And so to do that, we're going to say that we're going to use log odds. So we're going to say that the probability of a particular output being one uh, is divided by the one minus that probability. We're going to take the, the logarithm of that, and then we're going to regress that value, whatever it is, on the, uh, the regressors that we're looking at, right? And that will give us a way to kind of transform regression into a binary classifier. So then the output becomes either a one or a zero, right? And we can use that or a probability of a one or a zero, and we can use that to make a uh, determination of what the actual output is, right? So um, this is the way that we wind up creating a, using logistic regression as a classifier. And I'll show you some examples of that when we get to the RStudio examples in a little bit. The more interesting one to talk about for this particular subject is support vector machines. And so how do support vector machines work? Well, in general, classification regression algorithms seek to maximize or minimize a weighted average of the training data. If you think of KNN, right, we're going to wait by the distance. We're going to take an unknown point, and we're going to wait how far it is from the other points we know about. Naive Bayes, right, we're going to count each observation of seeing a particular topic associated with a certain word equally. And logistic regression, we're waiting the output by the log odds of seeing that particular set of, of variables, right? Um, in support vector machine, we're gonna do something very different. Uh, we're gonna maximize the margin of error. So rather than trying to maximize or minimize what we see in the past, we're gonna try and find a classification rule such that we maximize the margin of error that it generates, right? Um, and so let's take an example. So here's a set of data. We got some triangles and some circles, right? And we plot them on a graph of some sort, right? Um, and the basic idea is that in support vector machines, we should be able to draw a line between the examples and then use that line to classify unknown examples, right? So um, if a new dot comes in, right, we can say it's either to the left or the right of this line. If it's to the left of this line, the lower left, it becomes a red circle. If it's to the right, it's a blue triangle, right? Now the problem becomes, how do you choose that line, right? There are many different ways to choose that line. In this particular case, I have at least a couple that actually still totally separate, and one that kind of gives up a little bit of that separation, right? Um, the answer that support vector machines relies upon is that you should maximize the margin of error. In other words, draw that line such that it's as far away as possible from any of the known examples that you have, right? Um, and that way you kind of maximize the, um, the, the margin of error that you have for classifying this particular tool. Now, you know, how, but how do you draw that boundary so, so that the margin is the widest, right? So this is one particular way you could draw that boundary so the margin is even wider, right? But you could draw that potentially in other ways, right? It might be that one of these other lines actually also has a wide boundary, right? And how do you calculate the wide boundary? And all these kind of questions come up, right? Um, so the basic idea is simple. Draw the boundary to mark, maximize the margin of error. And really you wanna focus on the edge points. Right? If you've got a way to group all those things together, then you want to focus on the points that are close to each other so that you know how to draw that line. Right? 
Uh, but a linear boundary, it's not going to work in many situations. So do we use a nonlinear solution like this one, right, where we kind of draw lines that kind of capture individual points, right? Is that the way we work on it, right? Um, or do we say, no, 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 you should always draw a linear line or a small dimensional line and just accept the fact that you're going to get some of the points wrong, right? Um, and so how to exactly do this is where support vector machines uh, becomes interesting and becomes complicated and there's, and there's different methods out there for drawing them in different ways to answer this question. So uh, in the um, RStudio examples, which we're about to get into, we'll talk about some of those ways.